Japanese monkeys, their scientific name is Makaka fuscata fuscata, are a species found only in Japan. Grouped in the middle range of monkey intelligence, they are lovable creatures. This one, Daigoro, was born handicapped. He has no hands and no legs. Daigoro the monkey did not live long, but his life, short as it was, has left us something serious to think about with regard to our own future. Daigoro was born on July the 10th, 1977, on Awajishima Island in the Bay of Osaka. On this island is a monkey center where wild monkeys are brought to be fed, mainly as a tourist attraction. With the encroachment of technology on this small island, rich in ancient myths and legends, its monkey population began to die out. Those who refused to die were taken to the center, and it was among these monkeys that, about 10 years ago, physical deformities began to occur with alarming frequency. The first case of deformity in wild monkeys in Japan was reported in 1955 at Takasaki-yama in Kyushu. Similar reports have followed from every part of the country. Daigoro was found shortly after his birth in a state closer to death than to life. He was given as a sort of scientific guinea pig to Hideyuki Otani, a professional photographer who was visiting the island on an assignment. Otani brought Daigoro to Tokyo, Japan's sprawling capital, with a population of 13 million. Daigoro's new home is an apartment in the northwest suburb of Ogikubo. Estate agents call such apartments mansions, and their market price runs into tens of thousands of dollars. But in reality, the apartment is a humble four-room affair on the sixth floor of a medium-sized building. Otani lives here with his wife, Junko, and his three young daughters, with the arrival of Daigoro, the household numbers six. When he arrived, Daigoro was less than six inches tall and weighed only about 10 ounces. He twittered like a little bird, and these twitters were the only sign that he was alive. A quarter of his face, which was covered in scratches, was taken up by a pair of enormous eyes, constantly brimming with tears. Junko quickly discovered that he had introverted eyelashes. With great patience, she corrected the eyelashes, one by one, with a matchstick. In a month, his tears had stopped. ね、<笑><笑> Yes. 
Three months passed. Then, one day, when for the thousandth time Junko called him by his name, Daimoro, who had lain immobile like a piece of rag and shown no reaction whatsoever, suddenly turned himself over to face her. Junko was in tears when she broke the news to the family. By the sixth month, Daigoro was not only rolling himself over in every direction, but crawling about the place quite freely. He even learned, with a great deal of caution at first, to go up and down the stairs. Daigoro knows the exact time that Maho, Otani's youngest daughter and his favourite playmate, comes home from nursery school. He watches for her from the roof and begs Junko to take him out to meet her. If he is left alone in the house, he howls like a wild beast, tears cushions and newspapers to ribbons and dirties the floor with excrement. <laughs> <laughs> Daigoro has no leg bones. He does have arms, but they end at the elbow thus depriving him of the benefit of hands or fingers. He does not seem too unhappy about it, though. He makes the most of what he has when he plays, and often demonstrates extraordinary agility, considering the severity of his handicap. He loves being bathed. Junko washes him with a special alcohol shampoo, an expensive item that she and her family never use on themselves. The shampoo, Junko contends, helps keep his arms and bottom from suppurating, inflamed as they are from so much rubbing against the tatami, or straw-matted Japanese floor. Junko has learnt to recognise 20 different ways in which Daigoro speaks to her. He, in his turn, understands her very well. When she scolds him, for instance, tears well up in his eyes. It is almost a year since Daigoro was born on the island and left to die. He is now the one boy in a very feminine household.
Otani's eldest daughter, Seiko, is a college student. The second daughter, Kazuyo, is in the fourth grade. But Daigoro knows who the boss in the family is. He's always there at the front door to meet Otani when he comes home and to show his joy at having the master back in the house. Otani, a busy photographer, seldom gets home before nine o'clock. Junko serves his dinner late and little Maho tries to win her father's attention, having lost out to Daigoro in a similar competition at the family dinner time. But the only son has a traditional advantage, and Daigoro wins their little game, as usual. だ。ん<笑><笑> The law forbids the raising of Japanese monkeys at home, for they have been designated by the government as a specially protected species. Otani obtained permission to keep Daigoro only on the understanding that he would subject the monkey to scientific study. Dr. Mitsushiro Kida, assistant professor at Teikyo University, has examined Daigoro and says that if the monkey had been born normal, he would have grown quite big. From his studies, he has concluded that the deformity is not the result of hereditary factors. What probably happened, he suggests, was that some external stimulus affected the mother in the early stages of her pregnancy. The sad appeal in the eyes of mother monkeys hugging their little deformed babies in their arms, prompted Otani to record them in photographs and to publish the photographs in a book. Daigoro is designated Homo erectus, though he has no legs to stand on. swing among the trees, nor does he have fingers to hug his mother and cling to her to be carried about. All he has is the amazing strength to go on living and the love of the people around him who share his life. Junko, Daigoro's foster mother, is a victim of the atomic bomb. At 8.45 a.m. on August the 6th, 1945, when the bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Junko was only a mile from the blast center. But her house was protected by a small hill, and miraculously, both she and the house survived the Holocaust. She was, however, exposed to secondary radiation and has lived ever since in fear of the after effects. As a certified bomb victim, she still undergoes a physical checkup each year. In Hiroshima, Junko's hometown, there are still 110,000 bomb victims alive who suffer from chronic anemia and live with the fear of giving birth to deformed children. Tokyo has about 10,000 such victims who have moved from Hiroshima. 
but most will not talk about their experience for fear of limiting marriage and employment opportunities. <laughs> Junko has left Daigoro alone for the first time. She was away three hours. Monkeys are known to be immune to toilet training, and Daigoro is no exception. He dirties the floor as he pleases. When angry, he does it on purpose. Cleaning up the mess and getting rid of the stench is an exhausting job. Last year, Daigoro bared his teeth at his own reflection in a mirror. He still does not like looking at himself. He also dislikes animals that look like him. Perhaps he believes he is a human being just like Junko and Mako. Junko keeps a diary of Daigoro's activities that is now in its fourth volume. And on Awajishima Island, another baby monkey, born deformed, is found drowned in a small pond. Summer brings back sad memories to Junko and her family. One of her two sisters was directly exposed to the bomb blast in Hiroshima. She was brought home hopelessly burned, and three days later, her life dissolved away like her burned body. The other sister has survived, in spite of the burns that have covered her body with keloid marks. The school Junko attended was not burned down, though two-thirds of her class perished. Her sister was at school when the blast hit the city. Covered with burns and bleeding from the cuts made by pieces of broken glass, she walked the two and a half miles home and collapsed as soon as she arrived. So, 
もうそういう人たちがあれかしらこれ亡くなってどれぐらいそのまま放置されてたのかしら何時間ぐらいやっぱり一週間ぐらい放置されてたのかしらうんそうね私もそこまではよく知らないよ、うん、私が自分の身がもう,あ,う、ね、あれだからねやけどしてるから、えー、もうだんだん見えなくなるしね、うんうん、この方まで来てねここへ来るとね、うん、こちゃみせがこうあったのよね二軒ことここに道は今,今は道,、うん、道なかったのなかったのこれずっとちゃみせがこうあってね、えー、そしてその下でねあのちゃみせがこう壊れてるでしょ、えー、その下で中学生の男の子などがね「あ,、えー、あのおばさん助けてお姉ちゃん助けて」っていうのよね、うんうんそれは私はもう自分がやけどしてるからね、えー、どうもできないですねそれをみるみるこうずっと向こう家の方向けて帰るわけねもう何とも言えなかったわね,そ,ねその時のあれかわいそうとね、えー、もうあとはどうしちゃったか知らんと思うんだけどねもうそのまま助ける人もいないかったしねもう本当にここ日山見るたんびにここでね茶店を見るたんびに思い出したわね。In Japanese custom, one week in August is set aside for the festival of Obon, the time when the spirits of the dead are supposed to come home to their families. A week later, the spirits depart again, and lanterns are lit to see them off. For Junko, who witnessed the Holocaust in Hiroshima, life is dear no matter how tiny. Her love for Daigoro is different from the love that ordinary pet owners lavish on the objects of their affection. One of her neighbors once suggested that Junko should get rid of her crippled animal. What are you going to do with it when it gets too big to handle? She asked. Junko went home, broke down in tears, and hugged the little monkey in her arms. In her diary, Junko writes, which would be a happier life for Daigoro? The life with us here, or the life he would find in the mountains in his home on Awajishima? Sometimes lately, he has a strangely pensive look about him. He even assumes the expression of a philosopher. Could it be that he is lonely? Autumn comes round, and the Otanis have decided to give Daigoro a chance of visiting his birthplace while he still can. Daigoro is now one year and three months old. It is a long trip, almost four hours from Tokyo to Kobe on the bullet train, another hour by ferry boat to the island. Last year, he crossed the sea in a small bamboo basket. This time, he looks out over the water in fascination.
This part of the island is still very much a preserve of nature. Here, 12 years ago, Minoru Nakahashi, director of the monkey center, first succeeded in feeding wild monkeys. There were about 50 of them at the time. In the following years, the number grew to 135, of which 53 were born handicapped. <laughs> it was Nakahashi, too, who first discovered Daigoro, left here last year to die. He took him home and fed him sugared water. <laughs> In this cage, the handicapped monkeys are kept for genetic studies. Nakahashi attributes their deformity to a combination of hereditary factors, agricultural chemicals ingested with food, and polluted air from the huge industrial complex across the strait. The monkeys exchange friendly greetings, moving their lips about in a busy, rhythmic manner. The handicapped ones are always the sweetest and the most gentle, says Nakahashi. <laughs> These two, in a separate cage, were born in the same year as Daigoro, though they are less handicapped than he is. Daigoro won't stand for this. At least, that's what everyone expects. But it is Daigoro who greets his surprised friends first. Perhaps it's his city manners. This one, Kotaro, is blind. Daigoro invites his friends to play with him, and their friendship deepens. Would he be happier living here with friends of his own kind? Daigoro bids farewell to his island mountains. For after all, Junko cannot bear the thought of leaving him here, now that he is so much a part of her life. Daigoro goes through his second winter. Then the bean throwing ceremony ushers in the spring and the evil spirits of winter flee. Last year, the mask scared the breath out of Daigoro. He screamed and clutched Junko for dear life. This year, he enjoys the ceremony and the roasted soybeans he stuffs his mouth with. Daigoro loves to come to this park rather than remain confined by concrete walls. Once, when he had a cold, 
he took some children's medicated syrup and came out here to play. Then he had a good sleep, and when he woke, the cold was gone. Another time, when his arms began to fester from constantly having to serve as his feet and his temperature rose, he was brought here, carefully dressed and bandaged, and watched over by his worried family. He loves the park in winter. He loves it when he is in pain. At the Dolls Festival on March the 3rd, when the health and happiness of little girls are celebrated, Daigoro hosts a party for Maho, Kazuyo and their young friends. In about an hour, the young gentleman at the head of the table has turned into a playful monkey again. He is far too excited to sit still. Without hands, he gets his teeth into everything, literally. The emperor and empress look on in dignified astonishment. Daigoro watches people all the time. His powers of observation are often quite uncanny. Seiko's purse has been attracting his curiosity for some time, and he knows exactly what she keeps in it. He is not interested in the money, What he is after is the bank's cash dispensing card, for he knows that this is what Seiko values most. Spring. The flowers and green shoots are a feast for the eyes. The sun shines, life breathes again. to get down from high places, but he cannot yet balance himself in trees. <laughs> the cherry blossoms of Japan are a national symbol. During the short week when the pink blossoms are in full bloom, people go out in groups to picnic under the clouds of cherry flowers. Here, as always, Daigoro is surrounded by smiling people watching him play. <laughs> 
For Daigoro, one year is the equivalent of three human years, and now he has learnt to sit in a tree. He peels and munches a young willow twig, reverting for once to something like a life in the wild. Sometimes, groups interested in the problems of environmental pollution come to Otani for his slides to show at their meetings. And occasionally, Junko is asked to give talks about Daigoro. ま、through television and newspapers, Daigoro's story has reached the public, and the little animal's extraordinary struggle for life has moved them deeply. Letters of encouragement have poured in from all over the country. One of the letters is from a three-year-old boy, Ryoji Tanaka. Ryoji is a cheerful, outgoing three-year-old. Just watching him, it's easy to see that his parents have never shown him a single look of despair. <laughs> Ryoji's letter has led the Otanis to the Society of Congenitally Handicapped Children and their parents, an association with 600 members. These children are not victims of thalidomide, a drug which was banned 18 years ago in this country after 306 cases had attested its damaging effects. These children were born handicapped for causes which are still unknown. At the present time, they are still denied welfare benefits. The Otanis too might easily have had handicapped children, considering Junko's exposure to the atomic bomb and the pollution of the environment in which they lived. It was in fact a fear Otani secretly harboured every time his wife became pregnant. All the parents here underwent the shattering shock and grief of learning that their children had been born deformed. They banded together to share and to some extent to lighten their ordeal. Otani believes that a monkey, being so much smaller than a man, only about a quarter the size in weight, is more easily susceptible to deformity. As long as our environment is subject to unrestrained disruption, every one of us must live with the frightening possibility of giving birth to a handicapped child. Daigoro has found a girlfriend. He has fallen for a stuffed kitten that little Maho has bought with her pocket money. He is so infatuated with it that he can't let it go. And his adolescent behaviour, though a bit premature, 
delights everybody. Daigoro has been the center of the Otani household for two years now and is about to embark on his second summer. The same heat and humidity as the first. A big city never sleeps. The traffic growls all night and the hot fumes rise up into the apartment from the streets 60 feet below. Summer in Tokyo is too much for even a tropical monkey. Junko remembers how once she lulled Daigoro to sleep by offering him her breast. He was critically ill then and close to death. Eleven PM. The city shows no sign of slowing down. Daigoro's eyes are still wide open. Around midnight, he finally falls asleep. At 2 a.m., as always, Junko wakes him up for the bathroom. Now he uses the toilet bowl like a good human child, upsetting the generally held theory that monkeys are totally unsusceptible to toilet training. This is one small miracle that love and care have achieved.
Wild monkeys are known to sleep standing in the trees, ready to run at the first scent of danger. This alertness is completely lost in Daigoro, for he knows, even in sleep, that he is wrapped in a warm blanket of security. 4 a.m. The room grows a little cooler and lighter. And beside Otani, the master of the house, stands Daigoro. He went to sleep only two hours ago, and now he stands at his master's side. Wild monkeys wake up at sunrise and begin their search for food, while the young ones stand lookout. Is Daigoro standing lookout for Otani? Does he consider himself a guard, watching over his master while he sleeps? Watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? The watchman said, The morning cometh, and also the night. If ye will inquire, inquire ye. Return, come. He fights to keep awake as he starts to nod. But in the end, he flops over and lets sleep take him. morning and the start of another busy day. Nobody knows of Daigoro's night watch. Daigoro often demonstrates amazing competence in making the most of his limited physical capability. He leafs through a magazine, assuming a pensive expression for he has seen little Maho do the same. When a neighborhood bully sends Maho home crying, Daigoro rushes up to comfort her. He has learned to return the love of those who give it so generously to him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
And now he's on his feet and running. Where did he learn to do this? Nothing seems to escape his watchfulness. Perhaps love really can work miracles. It is the day of the festival of Shichigo San, the day when we pray for a happy future for children who are seven, five, and three years old. Maho is seven this year, and so, in a sense, is Daigoro, for although in reality he is two years and four months old, that is the equivalent of seven in the scale of a human lifespan. Last night, Daigoro noticed the excitement in the air. This morning, he scurried down after the family from the sixth to the ground floor and managed to persuade them to take him along too. At the shrine, he is blessed with the rest of the family. He even proudly shows off the ribbon on his chest. Normally, he would quickly tire of such nonsense. Winter in the park. Daigoro went boating. He enjoyed the peach trees in full bloom, tasted the first sprouts of the willow, and joined in the picnic under the cherry trees. Now it will soon be Christmas and the holiday season again. The irises of Daigoro's eyes never rise above the lower eyelid. They look a little like the sun setting on the horizon. At about 5 p.m. on November the 19th, his irises rise above the horizon to the centers of his eyes. He becomes feverish and experiences difficulty in breathing. Junko calls a doctor friend and gives Daigoro some medicated syrup. Daigoro still finds it difficult to breathe and begins to bare his teeth. <laughs> At eight minutes past two in the morning, Daigoro stops breathing and his heart stops beating. He will not open his eyes, 
And his body, which a little while ago was soft and warm, has grown stiff and cold. That is the limit of little Maho's understanding. Junko puts the warm woolen jacket on him, his favorite jacket. She cleans his bottom for the last time. Having performed all his life the functions of feet, the skin of his bottom is as hard and thick as the heel of a foot. Junko obtains a white styrofoam box from a grocer's shop, scrubs it clean, fills it with ice, and puts Daigoro into it. On Daigoro's eyelid, one of Junko's tears. It makes him look as though he is crying too. When he first came to the house two years and four months ago, Junko remembers how his face was covered with scratches and his enormous eyes brimming with tears. <laughs> Why did Daigoro die? It happened so suddenly. Daigoro's body is taken to Professor Honma at Juntendo University, a member of the deformed monkey study team. Dr. Honma has agreed to perform an autopsy. Otani tells him how, a few hours prior to his death, Daigoro's irises rose to the normal position, probably a result of sphincteral paralysis. Junko hopes that the autopsy will reveal the cause of his death, which she still finds so hard to accept. The streets are as busy as usual, but for Junko, time has come to a standstill. At his death, Daigoro was 20 inches tall and weighed 4 pounds 12 ounces. 
he had grown four times taller and seven times heavier than at his birth. He looks peaceful in death, as though happy in the knowledge that a mission has been accomplished. A study conducted jointly at the medical school by selected staff of the anatomical and pathological laboratories concludes that Daigoro died of acute meningitis complicated by pneumonia. His death and the subsequent autopsy shed new light on a theory being developed by the scientists. The theory maintains that as animal life develops, the nervous system, muscles and bone structure are formed not in conjunction with each other, but separately. An examination of Daigoro's deformed arm suggests that the nervous system forms itself first, paving the way for the muscles to develop around it and finally for the bones to be built. The theory is a new one and like much related to the study of such deformities has a long way to go before it can be expressed with certainty. Daigoro returns to his island a second time. Junko travels in the same way as on the last trip, but this time Daigoro is in the small white box she holds. A journey by boat, a perfect setting for saying goodbye. <laughs> いや、普通の人ではね、だから3、1匹で何年最善だってバカに。いや、それ まあ、無理なお願いやらして、お手数かけたんですけどね。すごく元気だったし、もうね、もう少しはね、生きれるんじゃないかなと思って、本当に急に。まあ、帰ってね、風呂や嘆きのその種を僕がこう、奥さん方
A high school teacher and one of the staff at the monkey center recite a passage from the Buddhist scriptures in a simple service. The Japanese, historically an agricultural people, believe that everything in the realm of nature is imbued with a spirit. Unless the prayers of the bereaved are accepted in heaven, the dead must remain eternally in limbo or in hell. More simply, their prayers are a last farewell to a friend. Rest in peace, Daigoro. Sayonara. Like Daigoro, Ryoji makes light of his physical limitations. He enjoys himself at an athletic contest, the youngest of the 600 handicapped members of the society. Dr. Kida, the society's counsellor, writes, We must see to it that these children, born with an unfair burden, will someday find it a blessing to have been born in this country. Junko's world, without Daigoro, is an empty one. In his short life, Daigoro displayed a remarkable strength and will to live. He enjoyed the blessings of nature at least once. Then he left us to ponder the lessons of his life. The air that surrounds our globe is growing more and more polluted. Environmental disruption and chemical damage are beginning to undermine our very existence. A part of Daigoro remains in the laboratory for further study. A part of him rests on the hill of his island, a silent, eloquent warning to mankind.